Hi. This will be the last video that is mostly slideshow. After this point, it's all hands-on. In this video, we'll explore some uh, network-related information about the Oracle VM Manager. The Manager is, of course, just an application running on uh, a server installed with Oracle Linux 5 or 6 or Red Hat. So the networking on the Oracle VM Manager server is uh, pure Linux using whatever tools you're used to working with um, to set up networking. I myself simply use uh, uh, VI to edit the scripts in uh, Etsy sysconfig network scripts and uh, Etsy sysconfig network as well as uh, Etsy resolve.com. Now this is different from the uh, Oracle VM servers where you perform 100% of the network configuration using the Oracle VM uh, manager UI. There's nothing special uh, about setting up uh, and configuring networking uh, on the management server in preparation for installing Oracle VM Manager. Just remember to execute the create oracle.shell script before executing run installer.shell when installing the uh, Oracle VM Manager application and database. Um, all of this is explained quite well in the Oracle VM installation and upgrade guide. Also, one more suggestion about uh, the Oracle VM Manager. Um, this is a personal opinion, but I find that using MySQL for the Oracle VM database is a superior choice since it's fully supported for use in the largest of production Oracle VM uh, deployments. Uh, using MySQL as the database engine practically turns the uh, Oracle VM manager into a very low maintenance appliance um, that's entirely under the control of the system administrators. Uh, it is a robust solution that comes with uh, automated full uh, hot daily backups that are reliable and extremely easy to recover. Um, I discussed the advantages of uh, MySQL in the backup and recovery uh, best practices guide I just completed writing. Um, so if you want to uh, learn a little more about backup recovery, by the way, uh, please visit the uh, Oracle VM white papers page on the uh, Oracle Technology Network to obtain a, a copy of the backup and recovery guide. So uh, moving on. Uh, the usual provisos, uh, it's for Oracle VM 3.1 and 3.2, um, and we assume a lot of things, and they are just suggestions. Um, so, uh, let's start with a few tips about uh, Oracle VM Manager networking. Um, so, the networking needs access to the server management network only. Uh, it does not need access to the cluster heartbeat network. Um, the management server does not need uh, access to live migration network. It doesn't need access to any virtual machine networks, nor as far as storage is concerned, it doesn't need any access to the pool file systems or the uh, uh, storage repositories. Um, really, all you need is a, basically a single interface uh, with an IP that uh, is on the same network as the Oracle VM servers, um, and that's about it. It should be very simple to set this up. Um, now let's take a look at a few different um, ways uh, of setting up your Oracle VM, networking for your Oracle VM manager. Um, now I got three of them here. This is the first one. Uh, and this is just giving you concepts. That's all this is. So here we have an Oracle VM manager that's installed on a, uh, a physical server. Um, Actually, it's uh, Oracle Linux 6, um, and then it's installed on a uh, on that server. Um, and this is the recommended configuration if you're using a physical server. So basically, all you need over here on the right-hand side where the manager is, and it's a management server, um, is uh, ETH0 to ETH1 or whatever network devices you're going to bond together. Uh, it suggests that you bond these together, uh, creating a bond zero, and then your IP address uh, uh, will be there and that IP address is going to be accessible by the uh, Oracle VM servers. Um, anyway, it goes across the network and then to, to the left hand side on the Oracle VM server, uh, one of uh, many Oracle VM servers uh, in a server pool uh, that the My Manager will be managing and that's what I call throughout this, this demo, I call the uh, Oracle VM Manager UI My Manager. Um, so anyway, on the left-hand side, it goes through one of those two uh, ETH0, ETH1 interfaces or whatever you're configuring on your servers. goes to bond zero, um, and it's um, always going to be bond zero, by the way. You can't change that. Um, and then it'll be 
uh, go to the uh, logical, if you're using VLANs, cause that's what this whole series of videos is about, is using VLANs, you'll have a bond 0 0.200 or whatever VLAN uh, segment you're using there, and it'll have a VIP or virtual IP assigned to it there. Now, I think we've explained before that every server pool has a virtual IP. So every server pool, not manager, it goes with the server pool, has a VIP. And that VIP is always on the server, the Oracle VM server, that is acting as the master server at that point in time. And that VIP can float from server to server. So if this server goes down, then one of the other servers will take on the role of master server, and that VIP will move over there, and the Oracle VM manager will begin communicating with that. And all it's doing across here is it's talking to the agent on the one master server. Okay, now moving on to the next scenario, I do not suggest this in any way, shape, or form for somebody that is not really good at Oracle Linux or, or Linux in general. Uh, you must be really good with this product and really good with Oracle Linux for this to work. Um, but I really like this solution a lot. We're not going to use this one. I'm not using this one in this, this scenario, uh, but I really like this one a lot. And if you want to know how to do this, it's actually in the Oracle VM uh, installation and user's guide. Um, so that goes step by step on how you actually create this kind of uh, configuration if you're interested in it. But again, not for the faint of heart. Um, so in this scenario, the Oracle VM manager uh, is a guest on the very server pool that it is managing. So I'm just going to move on to this one because I won't, won't want to dwell on this, but you can see it's the same kind of network structure infrastructure except the guest is on the same server it's managing. Now this is what we're actually uh, using. Um, this is how I have it configured and what we're going to be using. Um, <clears throat> so on the right hand side here I have an Oracle VM server and if you look down there at the bottom it is managed by a uh, Oracle VM manager called Lab Manager. So it is in a different server pool and we're being managed by a completely different manager. All right, and it's just a virtual guest, or vir uh, Oracle VM guest, or virtual machine on that uh, particular server pool, and that other w running on that other manager, or under that other manager, and it has the usual logical network structure that we've been talking about throughout the entire series: uh, net front to net back to bridge, to VLAN device to bond zero device to one or the other of those interfaces out the network over to the left hand side which is the actual Oracle VM server that it's managing uh, in one of many servers in a server pool there. And that goes through either one of those devices, through Bond Zero, through the VLAN device over here, because that's what the videos are about, and where the VIP, virtual IP, is now assigned to that one there. And again, it just talks to the server management and agent. So I've got these highlighted here. Uh, the My Manager Guest manages the server on the left-hand side. The server that the My Manager is running on is managed by a completely different Oracle VM manager. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the hands-on. Uh, just look at a few things, uh, explore a few things on the uh, uh, the actual server here, uh, management server. So um, I'm going to bring that up, and then just quickly, I'm going to cat etsy sysconfig. This is one of those ones that you would configure on your own. Again, there's no tool that configures this. You have to do it yourself. Just normal Linux, uh, network scripts, if config. Um, I only have a single interface on here that I've configured, and that's this guy right here. And I happen to be using DHCP here. Now, a very important point about DHCP is this is static DHCP. So this IP address is always assigned to this server and no other server ever, ever. It has always gets the same IP address every time it boots up. And no other server has a chance of taking this. All right, now uh, let's look at some other uh, standard file, etsyresolve.conf, of course, you would uh, do. And of course, I mean, I'm not, I, you get the idea. It's, this isn't a, isn't a real resolve.conf file. Uh, I don't want to expose a lot of uh, information to you hackers out there. Uh, anyway. Uh, you might have a domain string in here, a search string, uh, and name servers. Just standard resolve.conf uh, kind of information. And the other file that I uh, always mess with on the server, of course, is uh, the network file. I put the gateway in here. Uh, the host name is uh, always in here. Uh, I also add this line, no zero conf, yes, to turn off or disable uh, that uh, automatic IP assignment protocol that I 
barely understand. Uh, and but that's uh, if you ever do a route or a net stat and you see a 169.254.0.0, um, that's what this no zero comp does. And when you hit no zero comp equals yes, then it turns that off and you don't see that. It's not a big deal whether you have it here or not. Uh, I don't even know why I'm blabbing about it. Uh, anyway, uh, that really is the uh, uh, extent of this uh, video. In the next video. We're going to look at the initial network configuration on an Oracle VM server right after you install it. So that one's going to be hands-on. And I will uh, talk to you in the next video. Thanks.